Hey, what's up? Quattro here for the Ultimate Blooper and today we're going to be taking a look at how to create these realistic golf balls and I'm also going to be showing you how I created this scene using an HDR map and uh, render it in the iRay renderer for 3ds Max. Now, like I said, I'm going to be using 3ds Max 2014 but you don't necessarily need 3ds Max to follow along with this tutorial as long as you know your way around uh, your software um, package of choice. So, first things first, we're going to create a geosphere and a geosphere comes in handy because it is created out of little triangles which are going to be useful for us today. I'm going to slap, um, actually I'm going to be using six segments for the geosphere. I think the default is four but since I've redone this tutorial, just to recap before, um, came in as six. Anyway, so six segments. Geosphere. I'm gonna slap a turbo smooth on top to create this crazy kind of beehive honeycomb um, texture on it um, for the killer bees to fly in. And we're gonna wipe the killer bees using the edit poly. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're gonna select the inner vertices one by one. It's gonna take you. Hey, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, 3ds Max has a tool for it as of 2010 and above. Um, if you're not using 3ds Max, uh, look up the manual. There should be something for advanced um, sub-object selections. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going into my modeling ribbon, uh, into the selection tab, which allows me to do advanced selections. And what I want to do is I want to uh, select all of these inner um, vertices, but I want to select them um, and you know not touch these outer ones. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to select all of the vertices which are uh, kind of joining five or six edges because if I selected ones uh, which are joining four edges I would be selecting these ones, or three these ones. So I'm going to go to the numeric selection and I'm gonna say oh, I want to cr I want to select all the vertices which are joined by more than four edges. I'm gonna click select and that's done the job for us. The next step is to chamfer the selection to create the basis for our golf ball holes like so. Just make sure they don't deform because uh, you're gonna get horrible stretching there. So I'm just gonna see uh, so that they just hug the um, outsides of the honeycombs uh, snugly. Let's see. That looks about right. I'm gonna click OK. Uh, now I want to do another advanced selection, but this time in the polygon um, department. I want to select all of these hexagons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to select more than five sided polygons. So that's hexagons or uh, seven sided polygons or what have you. I'm going to click, click select. That's done the job for me. But I also have these little pentagons which weren't selected in the process because they had less than six edges. So I'm just going to quickly manually select those because I will be needing them. It's not a big job. There we go. Easy as that. And um, this is where it gets wonky in other tutorials that I've seen. It's they they usually just um, bevel straight away and don't really leave any anything for realistic smoothing. So I'm gonna skip that and I'm gonna add an inset to all of my polygons because when you turbo smooth afterwards it's going to give you that nice sharp edge which is actually present on the real life golf balls. So that's where this model is going to shine. So then I'm going to do the good old bevel. It doesn't need to be deep because the actual holes in the golf ball are not deep. I'm just going to say one point four and one point two oops it's really wonky yeah there we go 
scale, probably 0.1. I'm going to say OK. And now, if I deselect that, add a turbo smooth on top, a couple of iterations, remove the ISO lines, and there we go. That's a realistic golf ball. Now, for the rendering part, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly scale down the model. And also, I hate this um, option, display selected. There we go. So it doesn't um, shade, uh, doesn't um, shade the edges of my model. There we go. That is that. So I'm going to click create a quick plane, square, just like that. Just a representative plane, doesn't matter. And what I'm going to do is at render time, I want this plane to be kind of almost infinite and cover my entire view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a render multiplier. So instead of creating a really huge plane and actually having trouble navigating around it, I'm going to just set a render multiplier for that plane and it's just going to do the job during the render time. So scale, probably uh, something like a uh, like hundred. Density, doesn't really matter. Can be five, left to one, whatever. So then I'm just going to position my golf ball above the plane, like so. I'm going to shift drag to clone another one as an instance and another one as an instance and another one and another one looks like a party already and another one you just literally place them however you want them. Now it is going to be quite difficult to place them like that to uh, make sure they touch all the other ones. So my tip here is if you click Alt X or if you right click and go to Object Properties and See Through, it's going to uh, make your object kind of semi-invisible. It's going to X-ray it. It's called an X-ray mode. So that's going to help you uh, position your object precisely. So I can see that there's a little error there, but it doesn't matter because I'm not going to be able to see it. So let's copy another one, instance again. There we go. Marginal error is allowed. Alt X. Beautiful. So I think I'm just going to leave it at that. In my original image, they were a little bit more chaotic, but it's just really down to your taste. Okay, so for the materials, I'm going to be using a mental ray shader, but I'm not going to be able to select it because my rendering engine is set as scanline as per default. So I'm just going to pretty quickly select iRay, which is my rendering engine of choice. Uh, I can, like I said, use V-Ray, whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm just going to say I uh, use Mental Ray for the Material Editor because it is a little bit faster. So I'm going to select an Arc and Design shader. Just going to use a preset. It's going to be a matte plastic. Actually, it could be a glossy plastic as well. I think that will look nice. And it's obviously white, desaturated, a little grayish, I suppose. There we go. And I'm just going to apply that to the golf balls. Oops. There we go. I'm going to apply a similar material to the floor. So I'm just going to copy that, rename it so it doesn't conflict with my previous one. It's going to be a similar one, 
but I'm just going to disable the reflections. Um, that's about it, really. Probably make it just a touch darker. Like so. Apply it to the floor. Now, lighting part. I'm going to be using an HDR map. And to do that, to light my scene in HDR for iRay, you just got to apply it to the environmental slot. For other rendering engines, you got to apply it to a skylight. Um, with iRay, you also have to put in a fake kind of uh, a dummy light in order to disable the actual lights uh, in 3ds Max and make it render from the environment map. But I'm just going to show you the way I do it. Um, so in the, in the environment uh, map slot, I'm just going to quickly select bitmap. Do, 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 do. I'm going to click my favorite uh, white room HDR. Click OK. Um, now I don't remember where I got this particular map, but um, you can find loads of free HDRs all over the internet. If you just Google for free HDRI, it's just going to give you loads and loads of websites where you can find some. Uh, one of the good one, one of the good ones it's, is uh, hdrmaps.com slash freebies. It's got really nice ones, outside ones. It's got interior ones as well, um, like that one. Um, it's free, high resolution. See interior ones, good for reflections or just IBL. Um, there are loads of websites. This one is a good one, um, and also openfootage.net. Um, the links are going to be in the description, or you can just simply Google them, whichever way you prefer. So. Coming back to 3ds Max, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, copy that over to the material slot, say instance. Make sure it's set to a spherical environment. It does that automatically for 3ds Max 2014, um, but fortunately it doesn't do that for earlier versions. I'm just going to quickly brighten up um, the HDR uh, by setting a value of 2.5 or something like that, just to give it a little bit more kick. And that is that. And what I usually do, just my own personal way, I still add a skylight to the environment uh, for preview purposes, and I just copy that HDR map into the slot. So, um, when I switch the lighting, let's see, configure. Oh yeah, it's got to be realistic. There we go. So now it's showing me where the light is coming from, um, from the HDR map. So I can kind of compose where the shadows are and, you know, it's just a really good way of doing it. So I know the light is coming from there. Let's make it a side lighting. Uh, yeah. I think in my original it was more like almost backlighting. So that looks about right. Um, that is that. For iRay, really simple. Just set your rendering settings. I'm just going to say unlimited. Uh, in the advanced parameters, I usually set the Gauss filter to 2 for sharper images. 3 just kind of looks like it's um, blurred a little bit, if you will. Hardware resources, probably going to limit the CPU, just let it render on the uh, one GPU I have. It's not going to be fast, usually it's much faster than that, but anyway. And I'm just going to select a low kind of uh, HD resolution, say 800 by whatever that comes out. There we go, and click render. This is going to bake in the environment. And that's pretty much the final result. Um, you know, you can tweak the exposure using the exposure controls or do it in post, whatever, you know, whichever way you prefer. Um, different HDRs will give you different shadows, different lighting, um, different highlights. Uh, it's really down to the HDR map, or you can light it yourself using just 
simple lights, doesn't matter. It's totally up to you. Um, you know, and at the end, you can, uh, you know, get something like this. It's a really simple one. So, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please do subscribe. That helps uh, me keep the channel alive. And, you know, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, whatever. Um, you can also feel free to leave a comment below with any questions or um, suggestions or whatever, just speak out your mind. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed it and we will see you next time.